And welcome back to the show. You know, every athletic program changes through the years, and that begs the question, hey, where are they now? Who knows? Players, coaches, we've all known them. They've followed, uh, we follow those teams, but then they drop off the radar because, hey, they moved to a new job, or maybe they're just out of sports. We caught up with a former UNLV women's basketball coach, Regina Miller. She was the first to play in the NCAA Women's Final Four in 1983, and she was the last to take the Lady Rebels to the NCAA tournament. If you're wondering where she is now, she's in Las Vegas, living in the community where she built some of her fondest memories. But for Regina, her path all started at Old Dominion University. Well, when I played at Old Dominion University, uh, we were one of the top teams in the nation. And I, um, you know, I, I wanted to continue to stay in the game. And back then, uh, the opportunities to play in, in the U.S. wasn't available to us at the time. So we had to either go overseas uh, to continue to uh, play as a professional uh, because we didn't have the WNBA at that time. So I chose to go to graduate school and it was a way to stay in the game and stay active. And I thought this is a, a way to give back to younger players that are behind me. And I always felt as though I was a pretty good student of the game. Uh, I pride myself in that. And that was an opportunity to learn the game more in graduate school and then go into coaching, and 30 years later, here I am. <laughs> Let's talk about that, because you come to UNLV, when I first met you, um, you're here at UNLV, uh, you know, basketball city, really, yeah. you're taking over the women's program. Just kind of what were your thoughts? Well, everyone heard of the Running Rebels. Come on now, when I, when I was growing up, or when I was early in coaching, you know, you thought of Grandma Ma, Larry Johnson, uh, you know, Tarkanian did a fantastic job here. Uh, we saw them play against Duke, you know, being back from the, uh, uh, on the East Coast. So uh, the opportunity to come to UNLV and live in Las Vegas, I was so excited. You know, it's just an opportunity to take over a program that I thought I could make a difference. And, you know, it had, had success early on under the leadership of the bowlers. And I wanted to get that back, you know, for the women's program. And we were able to create some success right away. Uh, and during my first season at UNLV in 1998. What were some of your, if you had to pick out maybe three teams that you kind of remember fondly yeah. off the top of your head, what would those be? Probably the uh, first team I coached here at UNLV. Uh, we had, uh, I think there were seven seniors on that group and they had not created a lot of success uh, during their time up, up until that last year and we were able to really turn the corner and help them uh, create success on the court, off the court, and, you know, leave a legacy behind of positive, positivity, and which propelled us to, you know, the next years of my tenure uh, as a coach here at UNLV, uh, able to recruit some fantastic players in early on, Linda Frulich being one of them uh, out of Germany, and Constance Jinx out of Chicago. But I think about that first team again, and then it propelled us to, you know, bringing outstanding players in, uh, as I said. Um, probably the O2 team, uh, I think it was 19, uh, 2002 when we went to the NCAA tournament. And Linda Frulich uh, was a senior on that team and Constance Jinx was a junior. They kind of led us uh, to go play back in my home state at North Carolina and play against uh, the University of Minnesota, I think it was back then. Play in my home state of North Carolina, uh, take UNLV to the NCAA tournament. They hadn't been there in a long time. Uh, that was a very fun team to be around, uh, to coach uh, at that time. I'm thinking one of the city's favorite Lady Rebels was mm -hmm. Linda Frulick, just because what she did, she was excited, enthusiastic, yeah. whatever. Talk about her. You know, Linda Frulick's very unique. You know, she's almost one of a kind. Uh, she was a joy to coach. Uh, she was uh, great in many facets. She uh, was not only great on the basketball court uh, as a player, and, but she was great in the community. And people just loved Linda, and as well as one of probably our best students ever. She was an academic All-American. So uh, she was a tremendous ambassador for our program at UNLV, and I think still is to this day. Uh, she's gone on, has done wonderful things. She has the Fro Academy now over in Rancho Cucamonga, California, and is doing a fantastic job. It's nice because I actually follow her on social media 
and keep up with her. And, you know, she married her college sweetheart. And now they have three young kids, and I think there's going to be uh, some good little basketball players come out of that group. <laughs> it seemed like, too, she was, she, she was like the face of Lady Rose. Oh, yeah. She was an ambassador for you, not just our program, but for the university. Not very often do you see uh, a, a basketball player, a women's basketball player, uh, featured on one of the billboards in Las Vegas. Uh, it was Linda Frulick. And then I've had some other teams I really enjoyed uh, working with over the many years and players. Uh, one being the team that also uh, almost won the NIT, were the finals of the NIT, uh, played uh, at Creighton after beating Iowa State on their home court, which was very difficult to do. It's still difficult to do to this day. Uh, but uh, we had players like Anthony Robinson on that team, Sheena Moore out of Michigan. Uh, we had uh, you know, the McCracklins out of Chicago. Uh, so that was a fun group to work with as well. Uh, I think, uh, well, I know now Anthony Robinson has gone on, has done really well. She is a police officer in North Las Vegas. She's also a Division I uh, official in women's basketball. I'm so proud of her that she was a great student of the game as well. She's been able to carry that on into uh, another profession. Uh, Najla Clark was on that team. She uh, went on to medical school and now she's a doctor in the Valley. So very proud of her as well. So just to name a few of those kids. And I went on to UIC, uh, Illinois at Chicago, at the Flames, and we turned that program uh, into a winner. And, uh, you know, had some outstanding student athletes that uh, went on to play overseas. Is it the uh... When you, you mentioned the WNBA and how that's grown, also how great it is to see women's basketball, the Aces, the WNBA, how, how that whole league has grown and it, it given ladies opportunities. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, you know, when we came about uh, in the mid-80s, we didn't have the opportunity to play in the WNBA. So to see, uh, the, you know, after the Lisa Leslie group that came through in the 96 Olympics and then, you know, Right after that, Cheryl Swoops, we propelled Dawn Staley into the WNBA. They were they made a big difference there to bring a pro league here in the United States. Um, but the league has grown tremendously each year. It just continues to get better and better, and the talent has gotten better. So you come back from Chicago, you're out of uh, coaching now, and you're working for the uh, Animal Foundation here. I am, yes, the, uh, our local animal foundation, which is one of the, the best in the nation, and uh, I'm enjoying my time there. You know, this is a place I want to be. Uh, I uh, had the opportunity, I thought that, um, you know, I love being a part of this community, and what uh, more of a better opportunity to try to make a difference than uh, for our four-legged friends you know, in our community. And the opportunity came about so I could, you know, go out and raise funds for them. And I jumped at the opportunity. And I, you know, every time I, I see uh, animals, you know, I just, I've learned so much, <laughs> you know, in this short transition. But, uh, you know, I, it, it's a special place. I really enjoy it. Hopefully I can make somewhat of a difference being a major gifts officer now at the Animal Foundation, and I'm really enjoying myself. You know, we, uh, uh, you know, they need our help, you know, and we can't do it alone. So, you know, I, I, I know there's a lot of animal lovers in this community, and so this is where I wanna be. And uh, I enjoy this community, it has so much to offer. And now that, uh, you know, sports, I'm always gonna have sports love in my heart. Uh, you know, with the pro teams that are here now, with the Raiders coming this this fall, uh, I mean, I'm elated. I I'm elated. You know, I'm just, you know, we have the Golden Knights. You know, we have, uh, like we said, the Raiders. We have the Aces. You know, we're also that pro team uh, town as well now. And then, you know, I, I think UNLV is going to be fantastic. They have two new coaches there now, and it's going to be. Uh, the men's uh, coach is doing a, a very good job in his first year uh, that I, I saw. I attended several of those games, and I think the new women's basketball coach is going to do a fantastic job. I remember her when she was in high school. Um, oh, it'll always be go Reds for you, won't it? Oh, yeah. I'm a rebel at home.
You know, I love UNLV, and uh, that's, that will always be a part of me. All right, I'd like to thank Regina Miller for her time. ODU was one of the top women's programs in the country back in the 80s. Still ahead on the show.